Hi, I'm Abe Cohen from Bugatti Broward, and today I have the privilege to be with Butch Leitzinger, one of four professional Bugatti drivers around the world. We're in an incredible Chiron Sport, full exposed carbon on the outside, and a beautiful interior on the inside. I'm really excited. And uh, I'm just gonna hang with Butch today and talk about the Bugatti Chiron Sport. I, uh, I wanna learn more about it. I, I believe I know a lot about it, but no one knows more about the car than Butch since he's been with the company for 15 years. So he's actually been with the company longer than the Chiron Sport. So, uh, so he's been through every single uh, adventure with Bugatti and I'm excited to pick his brain a little bit. All right, shall we fire it up? Let's fire it up. All right. So you remember the, the gearbox, the seven speed twin clutch? Right now we're in park to go to drive. Let's push it to the right. Let's go. So what drive mode do you have the car on right now? Right now we're in comfort, okay. which is what I usually use for you know, just driving around town. If you're going in at the high speeds, like on the interstate, uh, there's what we call the Audubon mode. And what, what happens when you put it in Audubon is it goes, uh, the, drops the whole car a little bit lower. It increases the, uh, the rate of the shock absorbers, makes it a little more stiff ride. It gives you a little more uh, downforce in the rear. And also it, it makes the steering a little bit more direct. So the car is a little bit higher in EB mode, which is your comfort mode, right? That's right. In the EB mode, it's, it's better for driving around town where you have speed bumps like this or you have transitions going into gas stations and such like that. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about scraping the front of the car. Right. And you can always lift the car as well. That's right. There's a function to actually lift the car. That's right. On the steering wheel here, there's uh, a knob that goes through the different modes. Yeah. And, and that includes what we call a travel mode. Uh, so like if you're loading it onto a truck, but also if you're coming into a gas station, uh, it, will, it will raise even higher so that you yeah. have no worries. Will that go down automatically at a certain speed? That's right, about 25 miles an hour it comes down uh, out of that mode. And that's to so that nothing gets ruined with the aerodynamics of the car, right? That's right. Okay. So, 1,500 horsepower, 16-cylinder. Are all 16 cylinders working at all times? It does have cylinder deactivation uh, when, you're, when you're kind of cruising around just to yeah. save, some, some, save some fuel. But, uh, but when you're actually on it, 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 you are using all four turbos uh, when you're at higher RPM and, uh, and all 16 cylinders. Okay. And now, then... But I, I, I will interrupt though. The, the, the turbos, it's a very unique system. It's a sequential uh, uh, system of turbos so that at, from zero to 3,000 RPM, you're actually only using two of the turbos. And the reason for that is because with large turbochargers like this car has, sometimes you have uh, what's called turbo lag which is the time it takes uh, for the turbos to come up to full power. By, by going through uh, eight cylinders through each turbo, uh, it's able to spin up much faster. Yeah. And, uh, and then when, when those, about 3,000 RPM, when those ones are running out of breath, the other turbos come in to uh, fill out wow. the volume. It's incredible that we've been driving now just for a little bit at slow speeds. And this thing is so smooth. I mean, we're having a full conversation. I'm comfortable. A fat guy like me could fit in this thing comfortably. I mean, I can't even, I mean, I have so much space here. I have more space to go back. Everything about this car is just spacious yeah. for such a powerful machine. I don't, I don't feel like, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm in a car that can go that quick. Well, you know, the headlines on this car, you know, for good reason, are, are always about the power, the speed. Uh, you know, and it, it is the world's fastest car, so that makes sense. <laughs> but, but I think what's equally interesting and impressive about it is how docile it is and how easy it is to drive just at, at normal speeds. Take it down to second gear. Second gear. And you ready? Yeah. <laughs> that does, does not get old. Does that get old for you, ever? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> So what's the top speed of this car? Uh, it's it's le electronically limited to 260 miles an hour. Uh, and the, the reason for that is because above speeds of, uh, of that, uh, you have to be very careful with the, the tires. Right. Uh, because the, the stresses that are going through the tires are, are amazing. So the engine has the capability to go obviously over 300 miles an hour as it already did. Yes. Um, but there's limitations because of tires. Well, it, it, there's that. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, at, at those speeds, uh, the, the aerodynamics 
of the car, the drag of the car, is really the biggest force that you're fighting against. Yeah. So talking about that, how do you stop a car going 300 miles an hour? What kind of what kind of braking? Like, it has an air brake, right? That's right. And uh, and but on top of that, the the, the brakes on the car. We have the front discs are 420 uh, millimeters. The rear are 400. Uh, it, absolutely enormous discs. You know, like that's, that's over uh, 13 inches in, in uh, you know in, in American units. But uh, you know, it's a carbon ceramic brake. Uh, so so it, 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 it's able to put up with the forces of a uh, you know a 4,000 pound car being uh, slowed down from 300 miles per hour. Yeah. A spot here. Oh, let's go. all day long. And the fact that it, you're able to put 1,500 horsepower down and not have to juggle the car. You know, there's, there's no, uh, you're, you're never having to fight the car. Yeah. Where, where, you know, normally, you know, you can drive a 500 horsepower car and you're having to wrestle it the entire time. Where, where this, it just tracks dead straight. You know, so, so here we are going, well, you know, we're 80, 85 miles an hour, uh, but the engine is just engine is just taking over at 2,000 RPMs, you know, it, it's barely above idle. Oh. You know, so you're able to drive very comfortably. And what's red line on a... Uh, red line is, is 6,700 RPM. 6,700 RPM, and we're at 2,000 going 85, yeah. like, like it's a daily driver. Yes. So have you ever turned the speed key in any of your test drives? Yes, yes. So the speed key, it's an actual key, you turn on the side of the car and it gives you the capability to go to the 260 miles an hour right. range, which is unbelievable. There's an actual key to unlock its full, full potential. And, and the reason for that is because, again, as we were talking about the tires uh, being very critical at those kinds of speeds, that's basically a, a way for, you know, to, to make sure you really want to go this fast. <laughs> and, and, and when you put that key in, the car goes through a whole system of checks to make sure that everything is perfect on the car, yeah. you know, like, like not, not only the tire pressures and, and, and temperatures and things, but also just to, to make sure that there are no faults at all, because at those speeds, you know, everything is very critical. So the most, the most common, you know, common people don't go over 200 miles an hour. Have you ever been over 200 miles an hour? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that a surreal experience once you break that barrier of 200 miles an hour? You know, the, the, the amazing thing about it is. It's a little bit like being in a private jet. Yeah. You know, like we're, you know, the, 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 the best private jets, you're flying along at, what, 600 miles per hour. Yeah, but it, but you can have a sip of coffee, right? Yeah. And with, with this, at 200 miles per hour, if you didn't look at the speedometer, you might think, oh, maybe I'm, you know, by the feel, it's like maybe 120 miles an hour, except for the things are going by very quickly. Very quick, man. But, but, but the car is so stable, and it, it, it's unlike anything else. I, 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 I raced cars for many years, where at, at, like at Le Mans, we'd be going at maybe 210 miles per hour. And, and, and a race car feels like you're going 210. You know, everything's rattling itself to bits. And you feel like you're going that fast. With this, I mean, you could, you, at, at, at 240 miles per hour, you could be driving with one hand, yeah. and you could, have a, a, you, could, you could have a sip of coffee if you wanted to. You know, it's funny, I've, I've had the privilege to be in a lot of exotic cars, hyper cars, um, almost all of them actually, now that I think about it, I think almost all of them, and uh, this is superior, yeah. this is just something that you, you don't know unless you're in it, unless you're driving it, unless you're experiencing it, um, us talking about it is, is, is nothing compared to what it is when you're in it, and I think... I just want to thank you and I want to thank Bugatti because what Bugatti does is remarkable. If you are on the market for a Bugatti, you give people the opportunity to go with you, drive the car, experience what it is before you spend money. And I think, you know, that's remarkable and I think that's the way it should be and I think you guys do a great job about that. And, and it's not just with anyone, it's with a, a seasoned professional race car driver who knows more about the car than anybody on planet Earth? So I think that's really cool. Well, thanks. Really cool. But uh, but I think it is important that for, for someone to experience the car because you know it is very easy to think, well, okay, it has a 1,500 horsepower and it goes this fast. So 
you know, I'm never going to go that fast, so why would I ever right. want that car? Right. But it, it, it's important to see that it's not one-dimensional like that. You know, yeah. it, it, it wasn't just a rocket that was, you know, built up purely for speed. It was meant for, you know, everyday conditions as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is, this is great.